welcome to another episode, guys. Um, today I'm renovating uh, a good friend of mine, James and Sam's bathroom. So we're just doing our own suite. Um, you would have seen me just quickly demolish the old plaster, the ceiling, uh, and all the cabinetry and things like that. So now that we do have our black blank canvas, um, we can start moving plumbing around, uh, putting in the new shower base. Uh, once those things are in, we can plaster up. Uh, waterproof tile, um, pretty standard procedure, but for now I'm moving some plumbing. So I've just got this pipe here, that's the waste pipe for the old vanity. Now the new vanity is a floating vanity, so we have to chase that into the slab and bring it up through the wall, uh, otherwise you'll, you'll be able to see it. Uh, so that's the first order of business, I'm getting a plumber in to move the shower head. The mix is staying on this wall but the shower head's going on that wall with the insulation on it. So that's a bit too tricky for me, I'll let him take care of that. Uh, I've got a frame out for a niche. Uh, there used to be a shaving cabinet here so I will frame out for that as well so we can pick up our plaster and then I'll check back in. Our waste pipe done for now. I haven't glued this last bit in because it might make it easier to plaster and hang the vanity. Um, and if you're not going to glue things, make sure you label it. So we've framed out for the niche. It's a bit unusual the way it's been done, uh, but there's water points right here for the laundry. So we've tried to get the niche as low as we can without having to move those water points. Um, just an extra stud in there because the centers were too big. Some big noggins for the tower rail. Uh, another stud there, that was a bit of a doozy, trying to check it out around all of this. Um, another stud to fill in where the shaving cabinet used to be. But we had to move those water points to get the waste in. And then another noggin here to pick up the shower rail. So the shower, the water for the shower has been moved and the mix has been installed. All right, we finished framing, so now we're ready to put the shower base in. Uh, once the shower base is in, we can insulate the ceiling, uh, pass the ceiling and then pass the walls. And then we gotta wait for the waterproofer, the tiler, and then we come back and do all the tower rails and the shower screen and things like that. When it comes to plastering ceilings, first of all, you want to mark where your ceiling joists are, so you know where to put your screws. And then you want to mark where the sheet is going to end, which is about here. Mark that on every joist, and then you can know where to put your screws and where to put your stud adhesive. Now, usually it's one or the other, not both, but exception the exception is ceiling sheets. So if it's um, not a corner or an edge uh, ceiling joist, what you want to do is put uh, two or three globs of stud adhesive. So you can see previously it had two. And then where, where there isn't stud adhesive, that's where you put your screws. And that is the correct way to put plaster on your ceiling. You don't want to forget to cut your rebate off if this is going hard up to a wall. Obviously where it joins to the other sheet, leave the rebate on. All right, there we go, that's our first sheet up. So screws all along that edge. Uh, you put two screws where the stud adhesive isn't, and then it, obviously a screw where it joins on the sheet. So we've got two screws, stud adhesive, two screws, stud adhesive, two screws. Now because all the walls are getting tiled all the way to the ceiling, you want to make sure the ceiling sheets are as close to the timber as possible. 
and try and minimise your gaps. We've marked out our shower base with a pencil and then we've marked the center of the waist which is this line here and those two lines across there. Now because we can't really get to the waist from underneath we've got to just get it right from above. our custom made trap in the center of a shower base. All right, now that our uh, waist is attached to the shower base, we can measure this distance here, it's 115, plus the depth of this collar here, which is 30 mil. So our pipe needs to be 115 less 30, which is 85, down from the height of the slab. So that way we know our pipe's gonna go into here, 30 mil, and the height here is gonna make up the rest of the difference uh, in the slab. So we'll cut that out now. Now, we've done everything right. We should still have a 90 mil difference here. Yep. So then the waist on the shower base is gonna stick down 30 more pass and sleeve over this pipe and everything will be connected. Perfect is acceptable. The perfectionist. Perfect is acceptable. Yes, it is. Ding 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 All right, the shower base is in, and we've just done a bit of extra framing around the bottom. I wasn't happy with the gap there, so now the plaster won't belly in. We're ready to install it. and the vanity before or after waterproofing and then tiling and then I'll come back and do the shower screens and everything else. But that's it for today. I'm happy with that. So when we come back it might be waterproofed, it might not be, but time will tell. We'll see you then. All right, we're back in the bathroom to finish off uh, everything that we can before waterproofing happens. Uh, we're gonna start off with the architraves. And a handy tip, if you're gonna reuse architraves, pull out the nails from behind can use pliers or whatever you want, but if you hit it back through the front, you'll 
blow out the timber and you'll have to fill up something much larger than a nail hole. So we can pull out uh, all the nails in the window and in the architrave. Now we're cheating because we don't have to measure or cut that one, that's already done. But normally you want to cut these roughly to length. So that way you've got you've got one angle ready to go and then your next piece you can just mark on the spot and then take it out and cut it. So I'll go through the process now of doing architraves. It's the same whether it's you know, a door or a window or 10 windows, it's all the same theory. So I'll go over that now and then we'll move on to the vanity and uh, we're just going to do a bit more top coat on the plaster. So sorry about the noisy fan, I can't turn it off, but we'll get into uh, architraves. All right, I'm going to start with the bottom one. First of all, you want to make sure there's no plaster that's going to get in the way. So you want to get this, uh, I call it a quirk. It's kind of the just a little step that you see between the windowsill and the architrave. You don't want to flush and you don't want to have a massive quirk. So three, four, five mil, something like that's pretty good. So always make sure you got a sharp pencil. Come over to your window and just make a mark and then that's just a reminder of the angle it has to be. Okay, so we've got our quirk here that we want and a corresponding mark on the piece of timber and we can take this outside now and cut it. chances to knock things around a bit. Also, when you're using your nail gun, you want to make sure that the nail gun is going lengthways with your timber. So this bottom one will go across and this vertical one will go up and down. That's because when the nails come out, they can bend up or bend down, up or down. So it doesn't matter if it bends up into the timber or down into the timber, but if you are holding it sideways, it could come out the face of your windowsill. So we want to avoid that just by holding the nail gun in the right orientation. the other, the last one to length. That way we can put them in position and check that um, everything's all right. All right, so I've just checked those two pieces are gonna work. Um, you can just go and move them around until all the corners look nice. And then you can put your glue on and nail them on for good. If they don't look good, then you can just um, trim up the pieces if they're too long. If they're too short, then just recut them and try again. Oh, 
All right, you're not always gonna get them perfect um, with the brands, so you can just use a quick palm sander and get the corners nice and flush with each other. Okay, so we didn't have to re-plaster this wall because there was no tile stuck to it, so the plaster just stayed where it was. Um, that means we didn't put any noggins or anything like that behind the plaster, so I've just measured the vanity. It comes out 500 mil, so I'm actually gonna cut the plaster out just here, uh, put some support in behind, and that'll help keep the vanity nice and secure because it is a floating vanity. Um, it's not supported by the ground. It's all just held up by screws into the walls. So I'm just gonna be a little bit more comfortable knowing that there's screws in the back wall and in the side wall. Uh, I just think it's gonna be stronger and longer lasting, so. We'll cut this out, throw some timber in, put the plaster back on, uh, and then we'll be good to go with cutting holes in the back of the vanity for waste pipe, water pipe, and then we can prop it up and screw it to the wall. Otherwise the drawer would have hit this architrave. 